Hey guys, it's Eric with the Film Photography Channel, and today we're looking at the Voigtlander Bessa 2. Okay, so the Voigtlander Bessa 2 is the the premier uh, classic film uh, folding camera. Uh, it's a 6x9, and it's one of the best uh, really ever made. It's one of the best folding uh, cameras that's uh, ever produced. Voigtlander was uh, among the best up there with Zeiss in terms of uh, the quality of their cameras. Um, this particular one, like I said, it's a 6x9, and I'll show you how it looks when it's folded. Okay, it just folds down completely out of the way, you know, that huge lens, uh, bellows combination. You hit the button down here in the bottom, and that uh, releases it, and, and now you've got your lens at a proper distance to expose that 6x9 frame. Um, this particular one has the, uh, the color scope R, lens which is a four element lens design five element color heliar and the six element apo lanthar the apo lanthar is is a the mo makes this the most valuable of the series it's a uh, they're all 105 millimeter lenses rangefinder is coupled meaning that you look through uh, although there's two windows in the front here this is your the window that generates your focusing patch this is your viewfinder window um, there's the, or I got that backwards, sorry, this is the, the viewfinder window and this is the, the window that generates your, your focusing patch in the middle. And, uh, one thing about the, the viewfinder on this camera, okay, it's, it's a tiny little, it's like a peephole, you know, from, from its outward appearance anyway. It's not a huge, uh, viewfinder window, but it, you, you'll be surprised, you act, it actually is a, is a decent, uh, viewfinder to look through. And the focusing patch is uh, is okay. It's kind of just like a not really well defined circle. It's like a just a round patch in the middle. It's not you know like a sharp round. It's just kind of undefined. Um, one unusual thing about it here is this is where you actually focus. And you'll notice when you're focusing, you see the the entire assembly moves back and forth. This whole thing is moving back and forth as you focus on it. Yeah, you see that. All right. It uh, most of the cameras of its day, the focusing happened on the lens. There would be like a nice little uh, tab that you would pull on, uh, or, or that you would rotate here for the focusing. But this one, so it kind of focuses like a view camera, um, it, where everything moves completely back and forth. I don't know if that's a superior system or or what have you, but that's just the way it works. Um, Nice lens on it. It's 105 uh, millimeter f 3.5. It's certainly bright enough for daylight and even for some indoor stuff. Uh, it's very very sharp lens. Again, you know, for for its day, it's a nice sharp lens. It's a leaf shutter, um, so you know you can you can sync your your strobes, your flashes all the way through the uh, entire range. Um, this particular one has a synchro compure um, shutter mechanism. And the, the shutter mechanisms from these cameras, I, I likened them to like watch movements. They were kind of like made like watches more than, you know, what you would think of a, a shutter uh, assembly being nowadays. Um, and I'll show you what, uh, all right, let's put it for example, we'll rotate this to, you see the shutter speed dial here. Uh, all right, you see the shutter speed dial there. Pretty well marked. You can easy to see because it's silver with black uh, numbers. All right. So before you can take a picture, what you need to do is you cock the shutter up here, and the the higher the or the faster the shutter speed, the harder this thing is to cock. And I'll uh, and the one of the releases is right here, so I'll show you that. Okay. Nice, fairly quiet leaf shutter action. Now, if I uh, put this on, let's say. Uh, a lot lower let's say I don't know what is that a half a second thereabouts same thing cock the shutter and see how much easier it, it, it is and you hear that little that little noise um, all right and, and you see the, the shutter moving back into place so that's how you cock the shutter um, the uh, the shutter speeds range from one full second to one five hundredth of a second and you do have bulb mode uh, you have your flash sync port right here, your PC port, and it gives you the option for X or M, 
X is their like modern flash. M is like those old flash bulbs that would fry everybody's eyebrows. The um, this actually has a self timer built in, and the way that works, it's a little unique. Um, okay, th this tab here or this little uh, button right here, let's call it. You can move it out of the way of the shutter. Let's see if we can do that. You move it out of the way of the shutter, which allows the shutter to move past that button there. So when you go to take your picture, you hear the the gears grinding there. And probably about, yeah, sounds like, a, I guess about 10 seconds, and it will take the picture. And then, you know, in this case, it was a one full second exposure, so. That's why uh, you heard that secondary grinding. Um, let's see. There is a spot right here uh, to attach a cable release. And the way that works is, you know, it just screws right in. It's just a classic uh, cable release. And, and then it, it'll, it'll push this switch here when you, when you actuate it that way. Uh, these cameras were unique in as they had a, uh, I'll close it up here, and just to close it, you, you pull up on this and you just kind of work it closed. All right, um, these cameras had a, uh, and most of them did, you know, the 6x9s especially, they had this little foot right here that just pops up, and what that does, and I don't know if it was just a popular way to use them, but it just allows the camera to sit like this, uh, and it would it would actually have it sitting up, you know, pretty nicely um, just like that and and you can I guess with your cable release or however you want to actuate it you could just go ahead and and uh, fire away um, looking at the uh, let's look at the rest of this this particular model didn't have the cold shoe the ones that were built later on did have a cold shoe that you can put accessories on like and maybe a uh, you know whatever type of accessory I'm not sure what accessories there were for this to be honest um, okay the the top knob here as you know this is the knob that's used for focusing and oddly enough it's got uh, feet on here well usually they have meters um, looks like this camera can be focused from three and a half to actually 60 feet so even at 60 feet you still you're still focusing oh uh, you know and I guess I attribute that to the the large fr uh, film frame size probably and there is a handy depth of field scale right here to kind of let you know. So even though the focusing isn't on the lens itself, it's on this top knob, uh, you can still determine depth of field. The back here uh, has the red window, which means um, that that's how you kind of figure out where you are and, uh, you know, which frame you're in, okay? Uh, this, this rotating uh, knob here is to to close the film uh, to close this window off if you can see that there it, it it displays like a plus sign to let you know that it's closed okay and you know the instructions tell you not to uh, well first of all don't load your film in the bright sunlight and to close this uh, when you're not using the camera I guess that's to avoid some type of light you know going into your film uh, hitting your film inadvertently I can tell you that I tested this and it's not a problem. I, I've sat this thing in the uh, bright, you know, sunlight in, a, in broad daylight and got zero light leaks. And I did that after I got the bellows replaced just to check to see if there were light leaks anywhere else. So, yeah, it's a nice tight camera, zero light leaks, no problems at all. Um, fun camera to use. The only downside is that you get only eight uh, frames per roll. But the upsides are really good frames. I mean, you got six by nine film is, is or six by nine frames are huge. They're full of detail. They're, if this is a great camera to take uh, photos like uh, you know landscapes, cityscapes, uh, street photography, even um, uh, or or you know even any any type of uh, photography where you kind of want to take your time and come up with something that has nice rich detail. If you know what you're doing in terms of you know using the right shutter speed and and kind of maybe anticipating because this isn't a you know uh, a camera that you're able to click away and, and do a, some f a fast moving uh, photography but if you kind of plan it um, like you know if you see a, a, a picture about to happen you got some 
uh, you know, something that's going to come into the frame and, and there's the background that you like or, and, and you want to kind of put that picture together, then it's easy enough. You, you know, if you figure, okay, I want to stop motion or, or I want to have a little blur or, you know, whatever it is you decide you want to do, you just kind of anticipate it, get ready for it, get the camera ready, remember to cock the shutter, okay, because it's uh, kind of embarrassing when you go, you're ready to take the picture and the shutter's not cocking you and you're doing that. So remember to cock the shutter, and also the other thing you really have to remember, you got to remember to advance the film. I've uh, more than once uh, have done a double exposure, and it's um, it's it's just a matter of getting in the habit. As soon as you take the picture, advance the film. Don't wait. Don't start thinking about something else. Just go ahead and, and advance it, and that way you'll be sure to be ready for the next photo. And if you do it at the same time every time, then you, there's not you're never going to say, "Oh, wait a minute, did I advance it or not?" Um, yeah, nice, neat little carrying handle here, and again, the thing is built like a tank. It's not heavy, you know, for what it is. It's, it's uh, you know, to, especially when you consider what some of these uh, six by nine cameras can end up looking like. Uh, I'm thinking of a uh, Mamiya RZ67 now, which literally is is this big, and it's you know, taking the the same size frame, um, or sixty. Uh, I'm thinking of the, you know, some of the Bronicas or Mamias, or some of them that, that took 6x7 and 6x9 frames that were huge, huge cameras. Again, look at this guy, folds nice and neatly out of the way. It's not it's not huge even when with the lens open, and you literally can fit it in like a cargo pocket when, when you're done with it. And it's a, it takes great photos, guys. I mean, it's this is not, you're not compromising here on quality. Uh, it's It's a great camera with a great lens. It takes huge frames, and it it really is a fun camera to use. Uh, it's and again, it's just a matter. Sometimes uh, you got to do a little planning to before you take the photo. This is not a run and gun type of camera, or, you know. But you know that's uh, that's what film photography is all about. I mean, it it kind of gives you a, a you know lets you makes you think a little bit more before you go and take a photo. All right, so this is the Voigtlander Bessa two. Highly recommend. Um, if you uh, if you get a chance to use one, I would take it. it I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Thanks.